All right, I'm not sure how many of you have seen the recent article that was released by the Washington Post. But basically it was entitled, Why All Christians Should Go Vegan. Now, listen to what the article quotes. It says, Franklin Graham, the son of Pastor Billy Graham, an heir to his evangelical empire, has gone vegan. That's right, perhaps the US best known evangelical leader has stopped consuming animal products. If that statement seems too outrageous to believe, see his Facebook announcement for yourself. Now, who is Franklin Graham? Not if you know a Billy Graham. Franklin Graham is the son of Billy Graham, which is one of the world's um, best known Christian evangelicals. Now, when we saw this, we were like, wow, you know, we, we have to check this out. So we went on his Facebook page and we started looking and seeing, okay, well, did Franklin really go vegan? Now, this is what Franklin Graham posted on his Facebook page. He says, the problem is I love quarter pounders with cheese, barbecued ribs, brisket steak, and I find I don't do very well at moderation. Therefore, beginning January 1st, I'm going to try something drastic. I'm going on a vegan diet. Vegetables and fruits anyway, you can fix them. Do you think I'll survive? Everyone is betting I wouldn't last two days. Remember in the Bible, Daniel went on a complete vegetable diet and after 10 days his appearance was better than the others who hadn't. If you have any great vegetable recipes, post them here so I can try them. What do you think? How long will I last? <laughs> now notice that Franklin Graham is now saying, you know, as his New Year resolution that hey, guess what, I'm going vegan. And I'm sure many people looked at this and many people maybe made that resolution as well. But notice very carefully that he spoke about someone by the name of Daniel showing why or one of the reasons why he also went vegan or what the Bible also refers to as being plant-based. Now, where can we find this? In the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 12. Daniel made it very clear when at that point in time when he was taken into captivity or into bondage by the Babylonians. Notice that Daniel and the other Israelites, especially Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they were given leadership roles within Babylon. Now, within the palace, the delicacies and the wine and everything else was offered to Daniel. But look, at, look carefully at what Daniel said. In, Gen, in, uh, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 12, he says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let them give us pearls to eat and water to drink. Now, imagine Daniel is now denying and he says, he's saying, you know what? Don't give me your meats and your wine. Give me pearls and water. So two things. He asked for pearls, then he also asked for water. Now, what were the results of that diet? Was Daniel more feeble at the end? Was he more fragile? Now, notice what it says in, in the book of Daniel chapter 1 when we drop down to verse 15 it says and now after the 10 days the countenances appeared firmer what it says fairer and firmer than all the children which did it the portion of the king's meat so notice that Daniel was now fairer his, his, his countenance was even more pleasant and he says he was fatter or that word is means firm he was firmer than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Now, a lot of times people think, well, if I go vegan, I, um, I may lose my muscle mass or I may lose whatever it is. But Daniel grew stronger. And what we realized when, when I studied this out, I realized that the same root word for pulse, which the root word is zero on, the same root word is linked with seed in Genesis 1 verse 29. And when we go to Genesis 1 verse 29, it, it gives us more of a description of this diet that Daniel was on when he spoke about pulse. Now in Genesis 1 verse 29, it says, And behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, and to you it shall be for meat. Now notice when it says to you it shall be for meat, in his other words he is saying to you, it shall be for food. So what was the food given at the beginning to Adam and Eve? 
at the beginning in that perfect state when everything that God made he said it was good and he created man he said it was very good what was that food that was given it says the herb yielding seed your your grains your nuts your legumes and he also said on every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed which encompasses our fruits so Adam, in that perfect state Adam and Eve subsisted on fruits grains and nuts now question what was added in after sin into the diet of man now a lot of people probably out there thinking well meat or um, chicken and, and fish and all those things were added in but when you go to Genesis chapter 3 verse 18 the Bible is very clear as to what was added in after sin now Genesis 3 verse 18 it says thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field now what is the herb of the field it's, it's basically referring to your vegetables so we see that after sin or after Adam and Eve they ate of that fruit and they fell into sin they see that vegetables was now added in so in the beginning man subsisted on fruits grains nuts and vegetables now <laughs> that is what we call a plant-based diet and this plant-based diet was one that that fully sustained man in a perfect state and notice that man here was Adam and Eve if you look at them Adam lived up to about 930 years and also um, Adam was an average about 15 to 17 feet tall now look at this for a second a plant-based diet which many people sometimes look at in, look at as inferior is sustaining a man who was living up to 930 years and also is sustaining a man that was more than two times our height today now we'll continue to answer you know is this diet really able to sustain us today as human beings and the Bible is very clear because in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 notice what it says it says that and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he says man became a living soul so guess what man is composed of the dust or the earth or the dirt plus the breath of life which makes up that living soul so now let us take a closer look at the dirt or the earth and we'll look at an article that was released in the year 1982 a readers digest article in November 1982 described a fascinating discovery by the researchers at NASA's arms research center which confirmed the Bible's account that every single element found in the human body exists within the soil. The scientists concluded that the biblical scenario for the creation of life turns out to be not far off the mark. Notice very carefully that every single element, people say, well, how would I get my calcium or <laughs> how would I get my iron? or B12 or whatever it is but notice that every single element that was found in the human body was found also in the soil now the I, I believe God God is very powerful and he doesn't do things happenstance the Lord gave man a plant-based diet which has a root based system in the soil now they basically will get all the minerals from that soil into that fruit that vegetable or that grain now on a plant-based diet therefore we can conclude that it will have all the minerals and nutrients from the soil which is also found in our human bodies so can it sustain us most definitely it can sustain us this is a summary of a findings from a museum Mont Blanco fossil museum discovered a 47 inch femur in which they estimated this giant man to be 16 feet tall now notice that a man which a female of 47 inches estimated to be 14 to, feet, to 16 feet tall so it's not far-fetched for Adam to be between 15 to 17 feet and notice the lifespan as we look at Genesis chapter 5 notice the lifespan of men before the flood Adam 930 years Seth lived about 912 years uh, Canaan 910, Jared 962, Noah 
950 and the list goes on now the question I want to ask is when was flesh introduced into the diet now uh, we're going to show you from the Bible when flesh was really introduced into the diet that we can truly understand at what point in history, in biblical history, that flesh or meat eating was introduced. And we can find that in the book of Genesis chapter 9. In Genesis chapter 9, this is what it says there. It says, as I read, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb I have given you all things. Notice that this was a point in time when Noah and the animals, they were all into the ark of safety at that time. The flood came, and guess what happened when the flood came? All the vegetations were destroyed, all the trees and the plants, they were all destroyed. So now at that point in time, God is saying, you know what? I'm now permitting man to subsist on the every moving thing. And basically he told man, okay, well, I permit you to eat meat. And did the Bible permit man at, at a point to eat meat? Most definitely. But then notice that there is nothing else, no other plants or vegetables or anything that he could have eaten. So man had to subsist on it for a time. This is what we call the emergency diet. The emergency diet. But not only that, but God also gave guidelines as well. Because he realized um, how, how, how this can really affect the lives of humans. So he gave guidelines. When you look at um, meat, for example, he, he said, eat only that which is clean and do not eat the unclean. And we see that in Leviticus 11 and also Deuteronomy chapter 14. He also says to eat neither fat nor blood in the book of Leviticus chapter 3 verse 17. And finally in Leviticus chapter 19 he also states that you must eat it within three days. So guess what? He also gave man guidelines because he realized how much it can affect their lives. Now the question now is what happened after the flood when meat and everything was introduced into the diet what happened to the lifespan of man how did it affect man at that time 10 generations after the flood we see Shem live in 600 years Selah 433 Sarah 233 years Terah 205 years and Abraham 175 years now notice the lifespan of man drastically decreased after meat was introduced to the diet 10 generations after the flood now there is a strong link as well between disease and meat eating and even the world health organization recently released a study which says this the World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer announced that consumption of processed meat is carcinogenic to humans, which was the group one, and that the consumption of red meat is probably carcinogenic to humans, group two. Now notice that word carcinogenic is cancer causing, basically saying that a processed meats cause cancer and it's prob probably red meat as well also causes cancer now we see science is now backing up of validating what the Bible has already said many years ago what was written thousands of years ago science is now catching up on it and we see not only that but we see many articles and and findings and video clips of the way animals are being treated today the mistreatments and the hormones and everything that is being injected in animals today and is it getting any safer for us to consume animal products is it getting any safer now not only are we living 70 years now but look at what this video clip is saying hard to get them to run around and play, right? They have voracious appetites and they don't exercise enough. It's about how active our kids are. Forget about it. There are 600,000 food items in America. 80% of them have added sugar. Your brain lights up with sugar just like it does with cocaine or heroin. You're going to become an addict. You end up with one of the great public health epidemics of our time. This is the first generation of American children expected to lead shorter lives than their parents. This is the first generation of American children expected to lead shorter lives than their parents. This is the time and the age that we live in today. And 
a lot of times people may also even have another question they may say well no that's that's too extreme or that's that's fanatical you know jesus ate fish read luke chapter 24 i mean it's clearly there i cannot deny that jesus ate fish but at that point in time jesus was not resurrected and um they came up to him and they wondered you know is this a ghost or you know is he real and at that point in time jesus consumed a piece of fish to be able to show that um his real is, is not just a ghost but then many people will use this to justify why they want to continue on in their, in their desires to want to eat a flesh-based diet. But the question is, Jesus ate fish then, but will Jesus have eaten fish today? Now, is the fish in the waters getting any healthier as the years go on? Look at what Dr. McCullough states. Dr. McCullough states, it is because of this bioaccumulation that about 40% of all U.S. exposure to mercury comes from eating contaminated tuna and roughly 75% of all human exposure to mercury in general comes from eating fish. He continues to say, when you eat contaminated fish, the mercury acts as a poison to your brain and nervous system. This is especially dangerous for pregnant women and small children whose brains are still developing. If infants or fetuses are exposed to mercury, it causes mental retardation, cerebral palsy, deafness, blindness. In adults, mercury poisoning can be a serious risk as well and has been linked to fertility problems, memory and vision loss, and trouble with blood pressure regulations. It can also cause extreme fatigue and neuromuscular dysfunction. So notice very carefully all the harmful effects that were listed as a result of the condition of fish today. Now, would Jesus really destroy his body by consuming something that is harmful, especially in this day and age? And also, did the Bible prophesy that this will also take place? that disease and animal will also grow to an alarming extent. Now we can find this in the book of Hosea. In the book of Hosea chapter 3 verse 5, let's look at the context of this text at first. This is what it says in verse 5, it tells us, Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek their Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord in his goodness in the latter days. And notice that it's speaking of the latter days or the last days. Now question, are we living in the last days? I'm sure that many Christians will agree that definitely we are living in the last days. And within the last days, Hosea chapter 4 verse 3 tells us specifically what will take place, especially in the animal kingdom. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 3, this is what it says. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and it says with the fowls of the heaven yea the fishes of the sea shall be taken away now we see not only humans are languishing or becoming diseased or feeble but also the animals of the land the animals of the air the animals of the sea shall the fishes and everything else it's all becoming diseased and sickly and as a result of consuming things that are more diseased and sickly we also are becoming more diseased and sickly when we see so many deaths are taking place from lifestyle dis diseases. Now the question is, what will Christians who go to heaven be eating? And I believe that right now we are in preparation for that heavenly kingdom, which God himself in, in John says that he has gone to prepare for us. And he'll come again and receive us as its own. Now in, in Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, starting from verse 4, this is what it says. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things shall be passed away. Now notice very carefully in heaven, it says that there will be not only no more crying and sorrow and pain and all those other things but there'll be no more death meaning that 
not even the animals will be killed or die in heaven now a lot of people think well maybe we'll have Burger King or, or KFC around the corner in heaven but we see that there will be no dead animal we won't be running behind a chicken chasing a chicken in the heavenly kingdom trying to kill it so therefore Christians who are preparing for heaven will enter into a place where there will be no killing of animals now in, in the book of Revelation chapter 22 it further helps us to see what exactly will Christians be consuming or eating in heaven now Revelation chapter 22 we'll read from verse 2 it says in the midst of the streets of it and of either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations now notice what man will be subsisting or consuming in the heavenly kingdom it says will be consuming of that tree of life which bears 12 man of fruits every single month now this is a plant-based diet that will be eaten in heaven so if we are preparing for heaven why not prepare our taste buds for what the Lord will be allowing us to subsist on in the heavenly Canaan that he has gone to prepare for us now is this diet does it come is it just a restrictive diet or are there benefits of eating a vegan or plant-based diet are there truly benefits now notice that this diet many studies have been released and science have consistently proven that it helps with things like weight loss lowering your cholesterol levels it helps you to live 10 years longer than the average American it helps with energy levels and many other powerful effects on the physiology of our body many people may be thinking well I, I see all the facts I see the signs and you know, yes it, it, I can see that this diet plant-based diet is ideal for man and I see that a meat diet is very carcinogenic or disease causing in our bodies and it's not the healthiest way to go now the Bible states very clearly in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 where it says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you and ye are not your own and it goes on to say that we are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body which I is now the Lord himself purchased us and the Lord himself has died that death just for us and he is the one that created us in the beginning with a body that is perfect a body that was made by the hands of the Creator himself now would we just go about destroying the body that the Lord has given to us would we go about eating or consuming or doing any habits any bad habits that would break down the machinery that he has given to us the Lord is saying today that he wants your body to be a temple he wants your body to be to a point where it can glorify him where it says in 1st Corinthians it says therefore whatsoever ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the honor and to the glory of God it's my prayer today to honor and glorify God in my bodies and what I eat and what I drink like Daniel like many of the other people in the Bible would you today say I too want to glorify God in my bodies and in my spirits and until next time stay faithful to the Lord God bless